And which one do you want to share on your screen? You okay? Don't wash it too. This one right here? Oh, yours is January 9th. Okay, right. Right. I'm like, um, no, that ain't it. No, just watch it December 9th. Right, right. <laughs> okay, right on. No, I have to come down. That's why you wanted to break that. Good. Because oh, you know, I'm just you know, you just have to come back. Yeah. It was you on me. All of that. Close all of that out. Is this it? No, close all of that out. I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to get her some chips and cheese. <sighs> Yes, yes. Right. So it's recording. You wonder why I don't work for so <laughs> When you know you had a good thing. Who <laughs> does that? Anyway, okay, we got it. Right, separate stuff. <clears throat> Let me know when your homework's done, please. Then I'm gonna log in and see. Self-mastery. Mm -hmm. No, I got it.
And I have another question um, about that mm -hmm. So right now, I receive WIC and food stamps. They want to bet none of that either. Hmm. I just need to start coming straight to the source instead of going, going by what other people say. Because <laughs> they're saying, don't, don't do that. It's going to mess up everything. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. But for one, I don't want to have to depend on the government anyway. I've done all of this. Right. Well, now, you're, you're the rich people take around. their money and do what they do too. They work both rounds. Yeah. Ain't that how we supposed to do it? That's how we do it too. Exactly. So you can have your cake and eat it too. So here, it's did possible. you know that the United States never finished paying for the Louisiana Purchase? Therefore, the land was never purchased. Great topic. And they're telling us we steal it. This <laughs> means that the land was supposed to go back into the hands of the Washington Moors, thus making the late Empress Bertie I C T ever Washington turn to guest on El Bay, the heir to the 1795 Spanish land grant Maison Rouge, all right? The so-called Louisiana Purchase consisted of what states? Is Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Minnesota, Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, parts of Texas, Alabama, Utah, New Mexico, Florida, and et cetera. The Washita are governing more than 3 million acres. In fact, it goes as high, if you go into the Canada area, it goes as high as 30 million acres. The Empress and all the Washita holds the title to the area west of the Allegheny, Appalachian Mountains. This land has never been part of the United States of America. It is the same land Abraham Lincoln spoke of returning to the Moors, um, which was talking about five states after, which was only a portion of this, after slavery in which he called the Egypt of the West and of Central America, the land between the Rockies and the Allegheny Mountains from the Gulf of Mexico unto, all the way up into Canada and on both sides of the Mississippi. Um, is there any proof to this? Yes, in the 1848, um, Landmark case, the Washita Turnica Nations took their land case before the United States Supreme Court and won their case under Judge Tanny. This is the same judge who gave the, um, I guess you would say, the decision in the Dred Scott case decision, which the Dred Scott case decision um, stated specifically that those who were Negroes and of African descent are not citizens of the United States and never will be. All right. Um, also, the United Nations recognized it as such as the Washington was part of the Economic and Social Council at the United Nations, discrimination against indigenous people. And as you see here, Washington did the Manya, Nuget, oldest indigenous people on earth. That's how we was labeled at the United Nations. So the Empress wrote specifically, this is our handwriting, as you see here, Vidiasi, um, Tierra. Um, Washington Turner, Gaston L. Bay, as you see here. Um, she wrote, um, it was typed, and as you see here, one nation cannot make laws in another nation. One nation cannot make laws on another nation's land. All right, so if this is our land, then they cannot make laws on our land. How much money is that? All right, um, 80, um, no, it's 80 quadrillion. Quadrillion, okay, I know that was a lot. All right, non-counterfeit, non-counterfeit USD. All right, that's for every year for 194 years. <laughs> All right, um, that's what she wrote. Um, so uh, this is what she was talking about. And How many zeros is that? I'm sorry, I was trying to write it out. Three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, it's the one above trillion. It is fifteen. <laughs> quadrillion. Right. So this is eighty quadrillion. 
all right? Um, and this was put forth, and as you see, it was signed by the Empress, true copy. And this is based on the land. So it's in your know. book, huh? Right. Okay. This is um, based on the state of Louisiana. The state of Louisiana confessed that they did not own the land. In fact, they gave back 68,883 acres of the 3 million to 30 million acres of land. All right. If we want to get the rest of the land back, we have to go into Canada, which is another jurisdiction, which actually Canada is actually um, documented in Washington, D.C. Canada is not even of its own self. So it's documented masses, in Washington, D.C. So the masses don't even really know this, right? No. Most people. So this is privy information. So this is, yep. So this is Division of of um, Administration, State Land Office, January the 9th, um, or 8th, 1992. And this is what it says, very obviously Gaston, Empress of the Washington, this is how they reply back. And um, basically it says, on January the 8th, 1992, your request, the cancellation for issuance of relations to adjudications for unpaid property taxes for the year 1848 in Washington Parish, Louisiana, in the name of Daniel W. Cox, um, Wyckoff, and Harrison, G. W. Turner, C. G. Hersey, um, Ceci, uh Henry Turner, Henry Turner, um, Sarah Taylor. Golf and Harrison and Eliza Quitman. Eliza Quitman is Eliza Turner, who happened to be the mother of Prophet Noble Lee. Mm. This is this is where the family ties come in at. All right, and it was a total of sixty-eight thousand eight hundred and eighty-three acres. All right, that was just a small amount. <laughs> All right, um, it says Article um, Ten, Section Twenty of the Louisiana Constitution of 1921, and it goes into Article um, 19, Section 12 of Louisiana Constitution of 1974. It says, these Constitution articles negate the need for any further actions for this office shall take um, relative to your request, may suggest that you seek private legal counsel um, relative to any questions of title and ownership of the affected property, if you can be of any, if we can be of any further assistance to you, please do not hesitate to contact us. So, do you think that we so, should get a copy of the Louisiana Constitution? I mean, you can definitely get it. I mean, it was always good to have in your, you know, right. That's what you. I mean. Yeah. In your what? You know, on you in your persons, um, in your library. So this actually is the United States versus the Turner's heirs. This is the actual court case in which that the Empress was referring to. And here go the same names, Sarah Turner, Eliza Turner, which is Liza Quitman, which is Prophet Nobodral Lee's mother, Henry Turner, and George Washington Turner are the true and lawful owners of and have good title against the United States, the defendants in and to all the lands and hereditaments claimed by them in their raid petition, which lands are described as the following on the map of survey executed on the 27th of March, 1820. All right, so this, this, um, you, this case proves that they won the court case. It says it was in favor of the Turner families, these particular families, all right, known as the Turner heirs versus the United States, all right? And they won the case, won the court case. So this goes back to this land grant, this Spanish land grant that we were talking about, actually it's the Moorish land grant. And this takes it back to the land grant, all right? And it tells you um, about the land grant, a little bit here, I'm not gonna read too much. Uh, let me see, what's the good, what's it here? All right, so uh, this right here, Commission of the General Land Office. I certify that the foregoing is a true copy for the report of land commissioners of the Western District of Louisiana of Oak um, Orleans. 
dated 14th December 1812, and that the above claim, which others mark B, are the second class comprising claims which, through not embraced by the provisions of such act, ought, nevertheless, in the opinion of the commissioners, to be confirmed in the conformi conformity with the laws, usage, and customs of the Spanish government. All right, this is why they called it the Spanish land grant, but really it is the Moorish land grant. Witness my on uh, my hand, this 6th of December, 1820. All right, so this is the land grant in which that she spoke about. And it goes back into the fact of the Washtenaw being the mound builders and all the oldest indigenous people on the face of the planet. They are the so-called Blacks of North America, ancestors of the Americas, Washington Empire, which would be called the Ultima Empire, the Kushite Empire, the Songhai Malian Empire, uh, the, um, the Tartarian Empire. All of these are just names that they have given out over the years, but these are one and the same people that have gone all over the world, built the pyramids, built the mounds, and the other um, architectural phenomenons around the world. Now, Ohio, I was told that, you know how they go to Egypt and they raid and steal from mm -hmm. Did they do that for, at the, uh, the yes. snake one too? Yes, at Ohio, yeah, mm -hmm. the snake mountains in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they um, just left fact, a little um, bit of whatever they want to leave. Matter of fact, yeah. Well, I'll give you a good an example. We went to the snake mound um, about maybe 10 to 12, well, about 12 That's years still ago. still on my to-do list. Right, 12, 12 years. Well, we're going to go back um, real soon. Um, but um, we did it about 12 years ago. We had a conference there at the mounds. And um, it was during the, um, the summer of 2000 and like 2009, mm -hmm. eight. And um, basically what happened was is that you had an individual by the name of Ross Hamilton. That's his name, Ross Hamilton. He was the curate, I guess you'd say the curator of the grounds at the Serpent Mounds. Curator, what does that mean? The curator means- um, he The ground was, keeper, the, the maintenance no, man? No, he was the individual who knew the history. Oh, uh, so, okay. He okay. was the custodian of history. Oh, okay. All right. He knew the history of the mound. Okay. And he wrote many books and he spoke about the giants. Oh, okay. Who built these mounds. Okay. And, right, and he referred to them and the, um, as the Athena Hawellian people, which is not more than another name for the Washington. Oh. That the okay. Europeans put on us. Like, so, like, so, right, because Athena is one of the, um, Athena and the and, um, Hopewell, um, Hopewell, he was two Europeans. And so what they did was put their names on oh, us. Oh, like they didn't do, okay, gotcha. You know. So, so the people would know who is there, gotcha. I, I okay. guess so, that's their That's how they've been stealing it, no, because if they, if they was telling me that, I wouldn't have known, right? right. But when you say Washita, I was like, no. Well, the, the Athena Hopewellian people are the Washita. And okay. so what happened was that Ross Hamilton, when we started telling him who we were, he started just giving us all special... Because you knew what time... Because you knew what time it is, so right. then he... Right. Well, it was me, it was um, another brother, um, Tamu, and um, others, and we actually started lecturing with him as he lectured. <laughs> and so we started teaching too, started telling out people, you know, the, the real signs about what was going on. He heard okay. what we were saying. So then he said, look, I'm going to take you down a path. And there's, and um, I believe that there's a crystalline ship that's underneath this mound. And he said, I'm going to take y'all down and hopefully y'all can activate it. And so we went down on um, the cliff side and he took us and we started activating it and we put our hands. People started hearing the humming noise and everything from, from this, um, whatever it is inside. He said he think it was a gigantic crystal, but he said he think that it's an actual, some type of ship or some type of portal, right, right. you know? And so we went down there. And, because um, they couldn't do it. Right. Well, that's what he said. He said, well, this one. Like, let come. me see what y'all can do. Well, that's what he said. He said, this one had to come through the original people, you know, being that y'all know who y'all are, you know. And so he didn't disagree. He said, I, matter of fact, he said, I know. And this was European. Yeah, it was European. Yeah, Ross Hamilton. You can look him up. Um, Queen, show, show me a picture of Ross Hamilton right quick. Okay. Yeah, because um, remember that book I brought in here that said Cosmic Womb? 
well, I just started reading it and it said, oh, hi. it talked about the oh, 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 line and somebody was stealing from it. I'm like, huh? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh. Well, well, what's still there is what a gigantic crystalline Right, well, they left a couple of stuff, but you that's but un, that's been un, rated. Right, but that's directly underneath the mound itself. So it's protected that way. Right, right. They, they, so they would have to destroy the mound in order to get it. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. And they decided to Is preserve it. Ross, R-O-S-S, Hamilton. So then that's like the Superman thing, how they got the ship and it's hidden and then the people, or Independence Day, how they can't, but when they people come, okay, gotcha. Exactly. Uh, the irony is he just died. Who? Oh. Who? Uh, this, uh, is that, that's him. No, it's not him. Oh, if it is, it must be a girl's gun picture of him. But he died in 2020. Oh, wow. So go to Ross Hamilton of Serpent Mound. Put it in Serpent Mound. If he was in Christy Queens, that probably took him out. Yeah, that's him right there. No, two. Yeah, I think that guy is on the book. Right, but see the other one, too. Get the other one. Yup, right there. That's the name of the book, too. Yep. Right. So that's Ross Hamilton, and he's the one who took about about maybe thirty of us, and we and he let us get on the mound and do the serpent dance and everything on the mound, which nobody can get on the mound. All right, but he let us get on the mound. Everybody else had to, everybody else had to take pictures of us on the mound because they couldn't get on the mound. Well, Nobody was allowed to come out when he let us do all of this. How do you know about the serpent dance? Um, because that's what we was going to do anyway. <laughs> with his permission or without it, but he but he let us do it with his permission. So what does that mean <laughs> when we go? Is that real soon? Because I'm right. I'm serious. <laughs> I got to do this. Doing, baby? I'm trying to find the meeting ID so I can make sure you're being recorded. Oh. But keep, move, like, move like, you know, like natural. Okay. All right. So, um, here it is, the Act of Congress, April the 24th, 1820. Now, this is the same time that all this was going on, if you notice, based on the land grant, it said 1820, and here it is, Act of Congress, April the 24th, 1820, was one of the earliest statutes passed for the granted land patterns, along with the Homestead Act, Section 4 in 1862. And as stated earlier, the disposal of the ter of its territories and lands required for the people is by purchase and by treaty, contract of and by the people, to wit, Northwestern Ordinance, 1787, need to look that up, Treaty of Peace, eight, Statue 80, 1783, the Treaty of Gantt, 8, stat um, Statue, uh, uh, or Stat, Status uh, 2, 18, 1818, the Oregon Treaty, 9 Stat, um, 869, June 15, 1846, the Treaty of Guadalupe, um, Adelego, Adelego uh, 9 Stat, 9 22, 1848, the Treaty of Session, 8 Stat, 200, 1863. The Treaty, the contract law cannot be interfered with as the statute as the supreme court has held that the treaties are the supreme law of the land see also article 6 section 2 of the united states constitution the treaty is declared the will of the people of the united states and shall be superior to the constitution and the laws of um of if any individual state so if so you google that i should be able to pull it up yes so okay. the treaties or the supreme law of the land and it's superior right. to the constitution, constitution. because constitution these here. particular treaties existed prior and before the constitution but that's why the treaty that's why the the constitution references the treaty you're right saying it's okay gotcha right all right so in particular the treaty of peace and the northwest ordinance those two existed prior to and it was built off of those mm -hmm. on particular um treaties in order to get the Treaty of Gantt, the um, Oregon, um, the Oregon Treaty, the Treaty of Guadalupe, um, Hidalgo, the Treaty of Session, all right? So those was built on that. So when we get to it, 
All right. This is here is the public statue of large at large, the United States of America. All right. Congress knows who you are. The treaty helps you to organize your government. All right. The treaty. What treaty is that? All right. The Treaty of 1789, which would be the treat the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, actually that was made. 1786, 1787, all right? Organized the government in 1789 to march. Um, let me see, what's that? To March 1845, arranged in chronicle order with references to the matter of each act and to the subsequent acts on the same subject. Subject matter in each document is the same to include the Constitution. All right, you come down the full general intent of the whole work in the concluded, in concluding volume. It says, or all of one document, the treaty, the Declaration of Independence, the Articles of Confederation, the Articles of Association, actually, and the Constitution for the United States of America. All right, all correlates to that. Right. Um, also to the Moorish American Consular or Council Courts, which was ended being abolished by um, President Dwight Eisenhower in 1956. All right, but once again, treaty law is supreme. All right. So when we go to the Black's Law Dictionary, we find these words to describe who we are in the Black's Law Dictionary, at least for those in which that is underwear, unaware of who they really are, like the term Negro. The word Negro means a black man, one descended from the African race and does not commonly include a mulatto, Felix versus State, 18 Alabama, 720. But the laws of the different states are not uniform in this respect. Some included in the description Negro, one who has one eighth or more of African blood, Term Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is Negro. Race versus Gung Loom, 139, Mississippi, 760, 104. Um, and then it says black person. Black person, according in constitution and laws, must be taken in its generic sense as contradiction from white or contradiction, yeah, distinction, distinction from white. This is once again, rights versus gung loom, 139 Mississippi, 760. Then you have colored. By common usage in America, the term in which phrases are colored persons, the colored race, the colored men, and the like is used to dis designate Negroes or people of African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry, Cullens versus Oklahoma. Then it goes down and says, it has been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase color person, which the courts are bound judicially to know. So you go up in there and talk about, you got the NAACP, <laughs> you know, um, fighting for you. They're the National Association of Advancement for Colored People. It's just when you're saying that color is not a term in which that the courts are bound judicially to know. So they don't have to pay attention to anything in which that anybody from the NAACP or anybody who, who consider themselves um, or have birth certificates that has the term colored on it. Or black. Right. Or Negro. All right. Yeah. Um, when the, how does the black, the black law dictionary or when does it play a, a part in our lives? Like, just so how they categorize us, how they okay. define us, all right, and how this is what makes us have to get from up under their definitions and start to define ourselves. Okay. This is the key because it says, Can I? I just want to add to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Black in all eyes of the law means civil letter more too. That's why they're shooting us down because we're walking around saying we're black, mm -hmm. oh, right, and then the, and then their law, real laws. You know, that's why they just can do whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference which people don't really 
get or understand. Right, and I'm gonna I'm go into it in a few minutes. Okay. So the term more, an officer in the owls of man who summons the court for the several sheddings. Now, a more summons the court. The court don't summon the summon a more. This is what we just read here. So explain that. The like court go into the court. The court. If I'm saying I'm indigenous. European that courts. I'm tied to the Let land. me explain. Okay, European yeah. courts. At one time, because of their government, had to give us tribute as Moors. Meaning, the country, pay us money. right. They had to pay us monies or sheddings, or border, border, border. right, or sheddings, as they refer to it as here. The countries is Germany, France, Italy, Great Britain, the United States. All of them had to pay us to even get on the waterways known as the Atlantic Ocean. And do import and export, do any type of business. They had to pay us. Right. They had to do commerce. Right. In fact, the flag on which that they now have, which they call the Star Spangled Banner, right. is really not a flag, it's a banner. Right. And that banner actually is nothing more than a commerce banner, not a banner over our indigenous nation. That's the problem. Right. So so if we say we're indigenous or Moors, mm -hmm. they're both recognized as Tied, being tied to the land, right. real, okay, right. all right. So right here, the term black is an adjective which describes, modifies, and give more information about a noun or pronoun, all right? Example, cold, happy, young, too, fun. The little girl has a pink hat, all right? Or in this case, the little boy has a black hat. Do you have some of those? The way you have that color coming in one nation? No, I, I would have to oh. make it for some try and say that the 14th Amendment made all the so-called Blacks, Negroes, and African-American citizens. However, we know that citizens make the amendments, not the other way around. How can your citizenship be based on an amendment that can easily be taken away? Also, the same amendment made corporations to be able to get equal protection because corporations get considered as legal persons. Corporations are fictitious, artificial entities. And that's all the 14th Amendment actually did to us as Negro, Black, and Color, which make us artificial entities, hence second-class citizens. But it still says in the Constitution that uh, I'm not a slave and you can't be treating me like one. You know, slave contract. But if we don't know that or know how to read those things. Yeah. Hence, corp, oration, as in corpse, corpse meaning dead. So how can they be persons getting equal protection? The 14th Amendment does not make you a citizen. It allows you to get granted privileges such as voting, when they let you <laughs> into your federal program, such as Social Security, as long as you pay taxes. Not having citizenship also makes you a second class citizen. So there, so those are the effects of not having citizenship and nationality, all right? The importance of nationality. Well, this is from the philosophy and the opinions of Marcus Garvey. And he says, declare your nationality. Basically what he says is this, is that Thomas Jefferson might not be worthless. When the measure of their tears shall be full, when their growing shall um, have involved heaven itself in darkness, doubtless a God of justice would awake to their distress and be diffusing light and liberty, um, liberty, um, among the oppressors, or at length by his exterminating thunder, manifests his attention to the things of this world and that they are not left to the guidance of a blind fatality because the Negro is not happy and will never be until he is restored to his own nationality. And my ability to continue my work on this behalf will bless the nation for as Thomas Paine said, no man can be happy surrounded by those whom happiness he has destroyed. But would I be right in saying that most people are not even privy to that? Of I course. used to be one of them. I'm just saying. Of course. Okay. So right here, native sovereignty and doctrine of discovery. This is how this went down. 
After Pope Alexander VI heard of Columbus' successful discovery, he promptly issued the inter etc. bill or bull, as it is called, on May 3rd, 1493, in which he declared that the Catholic faith and Christian religion be everywhere increased and spread and that the barbarous nations be overthrown and brought to the faith itself. He called on the monarch of Spain and Portugal to subdue and convert all native lands and possessions. In essence, he declared that unconverted heathens has no rights. All right, even so, think about it. All right, most of us declare Christianity now, but not under the Catholic Church, and still have no rights. So this is what he was saying here. Yeah, it was become a Christian or die. Right, that's what they were showing saying. how Christianity came in really quickly. Um, but didn't Obama wasn't his role? I know people don't like Obama, or whatever. But at the end of his reign, Pope came and then they restored the land back to its people, which most people are not even privy to that. Right, information. that's the mobile um, uh, um, bull in which that um, was utilized. I might have that on here. I'm, but I'm even when indigenous people signed a treaty, it was considered non-binding because there was non-entities under the canon law. Thus, generations of treaties have been routinely dishonored and indigenous people still suffer great injustices at the hands of their conquerors. The, ro the roots of religious persecution and racism go long and deep in the United States of America and around the world. The United States Supreme Court formally wrote the doctrine of of um, do, um, the dis, this doctrine of discovery into law of the United States in the case of Johnson versus McIntosh in 1827. And Chief Justice John Mar Marshall wrote, discovery gave title to the government uh, whose subjects or by whose authority it was made against all other European governments. All right? Few made himself superior to right. everybody else. Few people realize that legal distinction between Christians and the so-called heathens, i.e. indigenous people, Native Americans, the people, is still the law of the land today. Based on the discovery of um, doctrine of discovery and the result, um, resultant um, federal law in the United States continue to deny indigenous people the recognition of their sovereignty and treaty rights in their own ancestral lands of North America. Indigenous people still have unalienable na um, natural law rights to complete sovereignty as independent nations. This has never been refuted in American law, although the treaty law has not been respected. All right, so we still have the ability to do what we do, and this is justified and verified by the Declaration of, um, the, Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People from the United Nations. All right. So it says, in my analysis, the indigenous people of North America never lost their sovereignty or were conquered and subdued to the point of annihilation. Their land was collateralized by the federal government. Many indigenous people, dispirited by the genocidal act against them, temporarily surrendered to the federal system under the stewardship of the federal government. The indigenous people can reclaim their sovereignty by disengaging from the federal government and restoring political, economic, and legal sovereignty, I say lawful sovereignty, over their affairs as a nation, all right? Um, for example, you can get um, the Onondaga um, tribe in New York. Um, they have done so. We, as United Washington, are attempting to do so. One of the many steps needed to bring this immoral Although legal system of the colonization and exploitation to an end, the discovery of um, doctrine of discovery must be formally revoked by Pope John Paul II or any other Pope. The Pope that you're speaking about, he never denied this though. So even though he gave us the Popal, um, the Mopal um, document, he never denied the doctrine of discovery. That's the problem. Okay, okay. You have to explain that because to I me, although to he it. didn't deny it, right? If he's returned it back, then what does that mean? I mean, it it, was, it had to be in writing, just like he put in, he, just he, like the former Pope Pope um, Six Alexander Six put in did, writing. I thought he did. Yeah, he did. yeah, but that was that was the mobile 
that was not the complete. See, he didn't mention that this day, um, therefore, uh, let's say, therefore, the doctrine of discovery is no longer um, is needed or discussed. Um, we will return the lands and the sovereignty to the indigenous people of that land. Mm -hmm. He just didn't, he didn't go that far. I mean, it was a good step, but he just didn't go that far. Oh, so he didn't complete his process. He didn't complete the process. So, so what you're saying is one nation did that, and that's what we're in the process of doing. Right. Exactly. Okay. So here, what is meant by a nation or state? The answer, a nation or state is a self-governed political group of free and independent people organized under what one button? government with combined forces who shares a common culture for the security and the well-being of all. All right, to what law nations are subject? Nations are subject to the laws of nature and must at all times respect the law of nature. Now, this is this this right here, this is where we get this situation at with Bill Gates and all of them trying to control nature. They're trying to put up cl artificial clouds up in the air. They're trying to put artificial clouds up in the air um, to stop the sun. What? You it know, too late for they put up okay. chemtrails in the sky. They do all these types of things to stop the sun. So they are not in tune with nature. So therefore, this, this so-called country, which actually is the country technically, um, but this so-called union states are out of order with the respects to the law of nature. They're out of order. And when you get out of order um, with the states, this is why they talk about everything is legal. But it says to what laws? Laws are not legal. Legal are not necessarily laws. All right. So you might have a legality or legal lease, um, but it's not lawful. All right. And I get to that in a minute. But it says nations are subject to the laws of nature and must at all times respect the law of nature. They don't. Therefore, this is why we have to do what we do and get back in tune with Mother Nature so that we too can be on the right side. Of, um, of the law. Um, what are sovereign states? Sovereign states are nations that govern themselves under whatever form they choose without dependence on any foreign pow power. This is where we have to get to. Sovereign states claim independence and they are not subject to or dependent upon another power. They have a permanent population and a definite territory. They are self-governed and has the capacity to enter into relations with other states. What are the constitutions of the state? The constitution of the state is fundamental regulation to determine the manner in which that the public authority is to be executed. It is the establishment of order in which a nation proposed to labor in common for obtaining the advantages to which the political society was established. What are the rights of a nation with respect to its constitution and government? Answer, a nation has a indisputable right to form, maintain, and perfect its constitution and to regulate everything pertaining to the government. The government is established only for the sake of the safety and happiness of the nation. How does treaty play into the establishment of nations? Answer, a treaty is the compact made for the betterment of public welfare by the superior power, either for perpetuity um, or for a considerable time. Nations use treaties to procure advantages. All right, so. Before you go forward, mm -hmm. forward, you know, you talked about countries and this and that. So if we go back to the African continent and then the North American continent, the African continent is made up of many countries that make up the African 54. continent, mm -hmm. right? Right, Whereas country. the North American continent, so we have to put everything in its proper right. nations or nations, um, countries would be states, right? Under the North American continent, right? Okay, but most people don't think of it like that. I mean, right. I've never used to, I'm thinking different, right? <laughs> now so, I start learning this. Is what we're talking about under natural law. What is natural law? Natural law are laws which so necessarily agrees with the na nature and state of man. Mm -hmm. That without observing his maxims, the peace and happiness of society cannot be preserved. Knowledge of natural law must be obtained merely by the light of reason. For the fact of this essential agreement of agreeableness with the constitution of human nature. 
natural law ex um, exists um, regardless of whether it is enacted as positive law, although there may be instances where negative law, I mean natural law, can be judicially enforced. This is Barron's Law Dictionary, third edition. So as part of natural law, you have to be as a natural person. So what is a natural person? A natural person is a human being, as opposed to artificial or fictitious persons, such as corporations, which that's what we went over. The phrase natural person does not include corporate entities, but the phrase person without qualification may or may not include artificial persons, depending on the context. So see, this is the trick of the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment does not, well, rectify the situation between the person, the term person, is that artificial or is that natural? So that's that, why it's better so, to say at that point you're more indigenous. Right. So right. make that distinction that you're different. Exactly. Okay. So this is what it says. Thus the phrase, no person in the 14th Amendment equal protection clause has been held to include natural and artificial persons. So they turned you into an artificial person by utilizing the 14th Amendment, which was never fully ratified by two thirds of the states. Right, but most people don't even know that. No, they don't. <laughs> but the same phrase, no person in the Fifth Amendment privileges against self-incrimination clause has been held to include only natural persons and not corporations since the privilege is personal and may, be a, may not be asserted by an artificial person. So when you look at artificial person, what is that? An entity such as a corporation is created by law and given certain legal rights and duties of a human being, a being real or imaginary. Well, hold on, real or imaginary. So they're saying that an artificial person can be real or, or, or <laughs> what, real or imaginary. Like an imaginary friend. Right. Mm -hmm. Who for the purpose of legal reasoning is treated more or less as a human being, as termed fictitious person, Juristic person, legal person. So, All right. The, so, the Fourteenth Amendment was never fully ratified nope. by two thirds of the state, right. and nor was it signed by the president. Right. right. So, right here, memorandum of law on the name Stromius Homo. What does Stromius Homo mean? It says a man of straw, one of no substance, put forth as bail or surety. Now that's deep. Because when you get to the Wizard of Oz, the first person that Dorothy met on the Wizard of Oz on the Yellow Brick Road was the straw man. man. <laughs> that was the straw man. And what was the straw man looking for? The straw man was looking for a brain. He was looking for a brain. So this is why Black Spell Dictionary gets you to the word dummy. <laughs> right here. One who holds legal title for another, a straw man. Unlike it's Hexstead versus on um, Wysiski. It says right here, dummy. What is it? A sham, make believe, pretended, imitation. U.S. versus Ward, D.C., um, Iowa, two ninety five. As respect basics for the um, predicating liability on parent corporation for acts of subsidiary agent adjunct branch instrumentality. Dummy. Buffer and tool all means the very much the same thing. Which is different than the definition for the Wing Chun dummy. Okay. So, so that's a so that's a dummy. Now, why is that in the Black Slow Dictionary? The word dummy, we just thought about it. The word Negro, black, and colored, those are dummy terms. <laughs> because somebody holds legal title to you. But the what is that legal is, title? That legal title is a birth certificate. But the, <laughs> but the, but the word Negro means, in Mexican terms, because they call us Negres. Negres. Yeah, they call us um, Moreno and Morena. But right. yes, yeah, some of us say Negres, right. which means a dead you. person, a dead woman. And do they know that? Some of them do. Mm, well, that's good to know because I was out one time and they, I heard it say, no, those are negras. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know she could have been insulting. Right, exactly. Mm. So the word dummy means sham, make believe, pretend, imitation. Well, hold on, this is the same definition that we just finished finding out that artificial person is. Remember, it says real or imaginary. 
So a dummy is an imaginary. You remember, Rare Five Hope is called Lamont. The big dummy. Mm. <laughs> All right, so this is what they call a nuts, <laughs> technically. So as a national of United Washington, I am a natural born an indigenous, sovereign, a free inhabitant, and not an artificial person entity, but a living, breathing, divine being endowed with the infinite, infinite consciousness of God. All right? The most high God, higher self, over soul, the forces of nature, nature, nature. All right? So according to Webster Seventh New Collegiate Dictionary, we look up the word indigenous, and it says produce, grow, growing, or living naturally in a particular region, or environment, innate, inborn, innate, or C, native, so not synonym. So according to Blackstone Dictionary 7th edition, natural person is what? Is indigenous, native, the original or natural inhabitant of a country or related to birth, natural child. So, so natural person is indigenous. So when we go back, Natural person, a human, human being. Beings. We go back, a natural pony, a natural to, person. As opposed to artificial. Right. Or and a natural person can, is the only one that can abide by natural law. Bill Gates and his ideas of blocking out the sun means that he is an artificial person as opposed to a natural indigenous person. He owns something. He's not indigenous because the sun will burn his skin. He's a this Neanderthal. This is why he's trying, this is bingo, this is why he's trying to block out the sun. So technically, this is what is going on based on law. All right, Paul Robeson said, who are, we are, st who are still class, second class citizens country in this United States of America? So he was saying that we're still second class citizens. So that correlates back to what we just finished talking about. Are you sure you are a person? Remember, this the person, this real or imaginary straw man, all right? It says right here, a friend or a third person, third party who is put up in name only to take place in a transaction. Nominal party to a transaction, one who acts as an agent for another for the purpose of taking title to real property and executing whatever document and instruments that principal may direct respecting the property. Person who purchased property for another to conceal identity of real procedure or to accomplish some purpose otherwise not allowed. So you make a straw man. All right. The right, straw man is paper, a front. Right. right. It's paper, and that's how they deal. And some people sign up to go to jail for paper. Right. And unaware that they don't have to. Right. And this is why we declare our nationality. You don't have to go to jail when they're telling me to go to jail. No, no. you don't understand. That's I need a deeper understanding of that. Yeah. I Do you guys live on consent, I have to just say, no, I'm not going to jail. Consent comes from you saying, yes, I understand. Or yes, I'm guilty or I agree. Me. Me. I'm saying you so sign up to contract. When you say, no, I don't understand, they can just hold court. When you say, no, if I like, I do not understand, and of course, you give the laws based on the Dress Scott case. It states that I'm Thank not a you. citizen of the United States, don't I ever be. So, therefore, I'm asking the court to prove jurisdiction. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I'm asking the court to prove jurisdiction. That should always be the first That's the thing. first thing you want to do. Prove jurisdiction that you have some type of control of me and why I can't leave. And that's if I, have my, if I gain my nationality. Or just, right. okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So. We get into the fact of your live plain birth, your baptismal record. We don't put that on the public record. That is indigenous to you. All right. So this is what the Queen um, Mother wrote. Um, and she wrote, when Europeans arrived here, they entered into a diplomatic negotiation with the leaders of the indigenous nations. The outcome of those negotiations were treaties. Just like the treaties the United States make today with nations around the world. They didn't make treaties with first Americans. They made treaties with hundreds of indigenous nations. None of them were called America, all right? Well, actually, and it didn't 
um, and the citizens didn't call themselves American per se. If you're interested in treaties, you can read some of them online, but I urge you to go get the two volumes set, Documents of American Indian Diplomacy, edited by Vane Deloria Jr. and Raymond J. DiMali. You got that book? Got that book? No, I don't have it. It is most comprehensive and it provides context for reading the treaties. All right, I, ha I have the um, treaties um, book um, in PDF though. We are, we were, and we are sovereign nations. This is the same thing that we just went over. We are still sovereign nations. We just have to declare it. Categorizing un us beneath the multi colorable and cultural umbrella obscuring our status as sovereign nations and lead people to think that we want to be Americans, all right? Just like everyone else. Well, technically, have us to lead us to believe that we are United States citizens, like everybody else. There are no Americans, per se, except in the definition in which that we find that the um, Americans are actually those who are Aboriginal um, to the land, all right? So we are American in that sense. Right, so um, you have to be careful how you define the right. context because a lot of times they do stuff to, to slip us up. Right. The contract, if we don't know how they plan these word games. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so do declaring your nationality give you standing and your status? All right? And this must be crystal clear in your mind. For the purpose of your interfacing with your public servants and most other parties, we are taking the position of the juror. First, let's be clear in what status and standing really means. To give us some indication, we will look at Black's Law Dictionary first edition on page 1264, status, standing, state or condition, social position, the legal relations to an individual to the rest of the community, the rights, duties, capacities, and incapacities which determines a person's to a given class. Remember, they already gave us second class citizenship. A legal personal relationship, not temporary in its nature, nor terminal at the mere will of the party, with which third persons or the state are concerned. This is Hauser versus um, Dercher. Dercher. Um, so right here, it says, ultimately, your status is determined by you and only you. It can be anything you please in any given situation and you can change and update your status at any time to suit your needs. This is the power of the de jure. In the past, you was a, um, allowed the de facto courts to assume your status. Well, um, you're here, aren't you? Well, um, what's on your birth certificate? Um, it's black. Um, well, okay, well, you got, a, you, got a, um, so you got a social security card in your pocket? Uh, well, you got a license in your pocket, the ID from the state? Well, that means that you're property of the United States government. Therefore, you're here. Not necessarily. They well, know how to this, speak to this, this is what they say. Exactly. Exactly. But most of us haven't been taught or how that. to do so. Exactly. But this is what this is how they do you in court. So when they ask you, well, where do you live? Um, sir, I live in my body. Because <laughs> they're going to ask you, like, you live at such and such address. That's artificial. That's, that's artificial. That's de facto. That's not, I live inside of my body. What is that? That's if I leave United my house, States the household dies. Like <laughs> but if I leave this house, right, this body dies. Right. You see what I'm saying? So but, but that's under the United States Postal Service, some kind of code. Code 40 is the United States. The United States and also the IRS. I'm gonna get to that in a second okay. too. Yeah, it's getting ready to get up here. I forget it's been such a long time, but that's some kind of code to de facto us. Right. To take oh. us out of jurisdiction. So ultimately your status is determined by you. So in the past, you was allowed the de facto course to presume status. They always presume the status about you that suits their needs, not yours. Provoke their presumptive power in the beginning as you address them. Take charge and allow the courts to take no decision, make no decisions about you. In some instances, 
even if you agree with the decision, object it, and then rephrase in your language and issue the order. So basically, this is the thing, right? So if the judge say, um, do you understand the charge of being brought up against you? Um, no, I don't. Because based on the Jessica case decision, uh, I'm not a citizen, nor will I ever be. So therefore, I'm trying to find out what is the court's jurisdiction over me as a natural person, as one who is indigenous to this land. Because my audible build in which that this individual stopped was a, is a private automobile. This is not a construct of your government. You know, so it's just the way in which that you have to, you know, speak when you're in there. This is what they're talking the about. Oh, they the yeah. I think it's October the 15th. They keep, right. they keep. Talking about you can't go in unless you have a case. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they won't let you win. Why are you doing that now? Oh, yeah, that's what they claim, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here in support. Well, some of us are for learning purposes. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. That's the way that they stopped the learning purposes. That's the reason why they did that. All right, so now let's look at the word de jure. De jure, the scriptures or condition of which that's why we come they here have, <laughs> which there has been total compliance with all the requirements of law, of rights, legitimate, lawful, by right, just title, and in this sense, contrary of de facto. It may also be contrast with de grata, in which case it means as a matter of right as the grata means by grace or favor, all right? Again, it may be contrast to the um, um, equidate, um, equidate, which means by law, or as later would mean by equity. You and I can be and more than one thing at once. Therefore, multiple titles may be held. Yes, a man can wear more than one hat at a time. The de jure is the um is the on is the on the private side is on the private side however the de jure rules both the public and private so de jure rules both public and private any of all private side status they can be it is the highest and it's the important to um specify instead of only saying this is on the private side more about public side and the private side later you can be, for example, a de jure private banker if you wanted to be, all right? So what is a sovereign? Sovereignty remains with the people. It is not something a political body can do alone, can be alone. A political status or state, excuse me, does not have um, ultimate sovereignty power for that power is only alone from the de jure people. The very moment the state's engaged in a harmful act against the disjured creature, the state borrows power dissolved. All right? All right, so sovereign, a person, body, or state in which the independence and the supreme authority is invested and the chief ruler with supreme power, a king or other ruler with limited power. All right? Yik, Yik Wo versus Hopkins, 118 U.S. 356, sovereignty itself is, of course, not subject to law, for it is the author and source of law. But in our system, while sovereign powers are um, delegated to the agencies um, for government, sovereignty itself remains with the people by whom and for whom all governments exist and act. Now, this is what we're going to have to use when they try to come and force vaccines on us. Oh, back that up. Go. We we'll have to use this when it comes to them trying to force vaccines on us. Okay, which one is that? U.S. what? All of these, but I'm just reading them. Oh, um, can I get that page? Carter that? versus Carter Cole. Mm -hmm. And the Constitution itself is for the same real reason a law, the lawmakers being the people themselves in whom under our system, all political power and sovereignty primarily res resides and through whom such power and sovereignty um, primarily speaks. U.S. versus Lee, under our system, the people who 
um, or they're called subjects or sovereigns, all right? Um, Sessler um, versus um, um, Reservate Committee to Stop the War. We tend to overthink the basic political and legal realities that to the people, not to the bureaucracy or sovereign. Executive, lawmakers, and members of the judicial are married or inferior in the sense that they are in office only to carry out and execute the constitutional regime. Afrin versus Rusk. In our country, the people are sovereign and the government cannot serve its relationship to the people by taking away their citizenship. Our constitution gives us, and we must never forget our constitution limits the government to those powers specifically granted or those that are necessary and are improper to carry out the Pacific's granted ones. All right, this is Seminole Tribe versus Florida. When individuals sue states to enforce federal rights, the governments and the corresponding of the solvents in the traditional common law sense, with um, not the state, but the national governments and any state immunity from the jurisdiction of the nation's court would be required a grant from the true sovereign, the people in their constitution and from the Congress that the Constitution has empowered, all right? Terry versus State of Ohio. Yet if the individual is no longer to be sovereign, if the police can pick him up whenever they do not like the cut of his, cut of his jib, it would, um, if they can seize and search him in their discretion, we have entered a new regime, all right? Um, West um, Court, Coast Hotel versus Parish. Constitution cannot be changed by event alone. They remain binding as the act of the people in their sovereign capacity as the framers of government until they are amended and abrogated by the actions prescribed by authority which created them. This is Hale versus Hankel. All right, the individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He owes such duty to the state since he re um, received nothing, therefore, beyond the protection of his life and property. His rights, as such as ex existed um, by the law of the land, long antecedent to the organization of the state and can only be taken from him by due process of law and in accordance with the Constitution. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass, trespass upon their rights. Right, um, United States and mine workers. Um, there is an old and well-known rule that statutes, which in general terms, device pre-existing rights and privileges will not be applied to the sovereign without express words to that effect. That one, that last one right there, answer your question, Queen. Answer the Queen's question, all right? Can you just go to court and say that you um, do not want to abide by it? Well, this right here says it. There is an old and well-known rule that statutes, which in the general terms, divest pre-existing rights or privileges will not be applied to sovereigns without express words to that effect. In other words, they have to ask you for your consent. And we don't say yes and then we say we affirm, right? That's on the Bible. When they ask you, do you want to swear? Oh, or we affirm. Say, we say we don't swear. We right, we don't, right, we don't swear, we affirm. Of course, that's we don't what, say that's guilty. Oh, no, we say guilty innocent. or innocent. I mean, right. guilty. Say, what do they say? How do you plead guilty or not guilty? guilty, or not guilty. We don't say innocent. either of those. We say innocent. innocent. Right. We say innocent. That's the same thing. All right. So here we look up African descent. It says persons of African nat nativity or of African descent within the meaning of the naturalization law um, amended by Act July 14, 1870, or members of the Negro races of Africa or their descendants by intermixing with races constituting free white persons. The Negro um, race refers to being those from which the emancipated slaves in the United States descend. American, pertaining to the Western Hemisphere or in a more restricted sense to the United States, it was assumed that the term American 
includes all classes of um, citizens, natives, and naturalized, introspective of which they originally came from. Free white person. Free white persons refers to the Naturalization Act and amended by July 14th, 1870, by meaning naturally given to it when first used in first statute 103C3, meaning all persons belong to the European race, then commonly counted as white and their descendants, including such descendants in various countries by which they have integrated, integrated um, and it says immigrated, excuse me, and it says including all European Jews, more or less, um, intermixed with people of um, Celtic, Sinab um, Scandinavian, Tonic, um, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic, a Slavic descent. It includes Maori, um, Lab, Finn, and the Basic, and Albanian. It includes the mixed Latin, um, Celtic, Iberians, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal. Um, the mixed Greeks, Latins, um, Phoenicians, who is the Canaanites, and North American inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slavs and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. All right, it does not mean Caucasian race, Aryan race, or Indo-European race, nor the mixed Indo-Europeans, Dravidian, Semitic, and Mongolian, or Mongoloid um, people of inhabited Persia. A Syrian of Asian, um, Asiatic birth and descendant would not be entitled to becoming a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person. So Caucasians are not even listed as free white persons in the definition. All right. So when they use Indian there. Indian, like, the aboriginal inhabitants of North right, America. But sometimes, you know, when I'm unclear, I just put on there, I write that out and I'll put indigenous so right. everybody clear. Right. You don't, you, what sometimes do you people be playing games. So just, on what? Like, if I have to go into their court system and use a document, you know, you can other and put more. Or, I just put indigenous. Okay. Indigenous means more. You, right. know, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes yeah. when we under pressure, we might not think of the things that we need to. In Indian, that's what it means. But if they don't have a term, you don't know what they could be doing or thinking. So when you put, yeah, so when you put indigenous, they understand that. All right, so the United States in this case is the thing. Federal Corporation, which is the District of Columbia, which is a 40 mile radius. All right, known as USDC or the United States. It was created by the Congressional Act of 1871. Also see um, Title 28, USC 3002.15. United States means a federal corporation. So a United States citizen is a citizen of this federal corporation and not a union state or USA Republic. So now it's easy to see that the United States citizen is a legal fiction. US corporation and has no right secured by the Constitution. Only people have rights secured by the Constitution, not legal fictions. You shall have checked off other on the form. Um, if you check, if you go and get your form for uh, what's called a um, DS-11, which is your passport form, you would check other. You would check other. Yes, certain documents you do. Other. Yes. When I have to read my passport, yeah. You put other. Okay. You put a non-U.S. national, um, a non-citizen U.S. national, which I'll show you in a second. Okay. Yeah, I so, need to do those too. All right. So only people have the right to secure by the Constitution, not legal fictions. You shall be checked off other on the form because you are a state citizen of your state that you was born in. All right. Um, which makes you, well, which you was conceived in, and which that makes you a citizen of all states and one of the people and the beneficiary of the Republic United States of America, Constitution 1789-1791. A, right, a state citizen used to be known as a citizen of the United States before the Civil War, but the meaning has been changed twice for the purpose of fraud. The United States of America is the de jure Republic government not the United States, which is a corporation. The preamble to the Constitution establishes establish the United States of America, not the United States. So we have two different and distinct national governments. This is why you have two seals on the back of the dollar bill, because one is the de jure government, which is your government, which they is the pyramid, which they right. call the Illuminati. And then the other one is the eagle 
which is their government, which we gave to them, what they turned into a de facto government. But, but when they do that stuff, Illuminati and all that, they make us. Right. It's our stuff, right? Right. But they make us afraid to use Of course. Our stuff. That's the reason why they so did say, that. But then that's, but that's, that's why they we that. need to study. So, but when we do that for ourselves, then we know and we don't become afraid of our stuff, right? Right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Facto? De facto. What does that mean? De facto means Fake. not real. Fictitious. In fact. The it, strong it means, man, the dummy. Right. It means, in fact, not real. Imaginary. Okay. <laughs> so their government is de facto. It's not real. Ours is de jure, which was the government that was here prior to them, which that's what we showed last week, when it says that this is the last. They say that they built their amorality law on our consular law which was the last form of government in the last Western Empire prior to them changing things over. In other words, moving us from out of our position. All right, so here, um, UCC, which is Uniform Commercial Code, Article 9, Secured Transaction, and it says here, um, location of the United States. The United States is located where? In the District of Columbia. <laughs> not in the various 50 states. So the United States is only in the District of Columbia. That is USDC, or the United States District of Columbia. That's the 40 mile radius of Washington, DC. That is not North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. That is not any of those states outside of that 40 mile radius. That is the United States. So what happened is that they took the 14th Amendment and made you federalized citizens under the 14th Amendment. Is that why our, so our Russian security comes? Is it DC that it comes from? Or it comes from? Well, it goes first from the hospital right. to the state. Right. And then the state takes it and they send it into the federal. The federal sends it into the what they call the um, depository trust company and the subsidiaries. And then it goes on the stock market. Minnesota Rule 220. Get to that in a second, too. <laughs> all right, so Jones versus Teamer. All right, it says the privileges and immunity clause of the 14th Amendment protects very few rights because it's neither incorporated all of the Bill of Rights nor protect all rights of individual citizens. You can see on um, slaughterhouse cases, 83 US, instead, the provision provides, um, protects only those rights peculiar to being a citizen of the federal government. It does not protect those rights which relates to state citizenship. According, accordingly, it is not neither necessary that the plaintiff has non-resident status in order to bring a claim um, under the privilege and immunity clause of the 14th Amendment. As discussed below in section EA, however, plaintiff have failed to state a claim under the privilege and immunity clause of the 14th Amendment. In other words, whenever you go to court and you say that you um, or a citizen is under the 14th Amendment. It's not under the state. <laughs> so, for example, you see what I'm saying? they're yes. saying that you are a citizen under the 14th Amendment, which makes you. I object. Exactly. So, so um, question. Exactly. Um, back to that other page that had the Republican of the United States of America Constitution 17. 89 to 1791. Mm -hmm. So if we were to use that, we have to use that whole thing in context so we not usurped right. by their... Right. Because remember, we wrote the constitutions for them right, right. to practice import and exports in our territory. But then they begin to absurd us, absurd, and gain access to everything that we did and then put us in slavery and killed us off. They did. They practiced genocide. And you know, um, they still watch us like that because they, some of those people understand. Oh, I'm going to watch you real quick. Right. I, don't give, I don't care. You know what I mean? Because <sighs> some of those people do say things like that. Oh, yeah. Like irrigate, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I just yeah. don't say anything because I know I'm dealing with a fool. What do you mean? They or, not watch you. Uh, well, I have I indigenous plates on the truck. So, you mean so, they, so they understand that. They see that. So sometimes you know what I'm saying? I feel like this. I guess this is being noticed because it's to the public eye, but you don't have a digital place. You have no, I have everything under the more truly simple science. Uh, the world. So, you, so the house, the land, the cars, everything is under that. We manage right. God's 
of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And if we manage properly, it, we pass right. it on down to our children. Now, and I did what she's doing now for nine years. <laughs> but she wanted to take that route as far as putting the plates on the car and doing it indigenously in that way. So there's two ways you can do it. You People can do understand. It. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut your whistle. Two ways on the car, and what's the other way? Right, the way that I just told you, and then the way she's doing. Those are the two ways. Well, I did both of them that way. Yeah, she did both. I just haven't filed it on public record yet. But I own nothing. And controls everything. Yeah, most people don't even understand. That's why they say, own your own car. So if they want it, they can take it from you. But see, if you mm. didn't own it, and if it's in your temple and your trust, they couldn't take it. Because it's not yours. To... Exactly. Anyway. Did you understand? You got to repeat a couple times. Oh, okay. Well, You're I good. had to listen to it too before. You know. People still don't understand, but it's going to be. That's all right. Taxpayers are not the your state citizens. That's why, because we've been federalized. So you got to pay. Um, taxes to the state and to the federal is because we have not enacted our statehood. All right. Now that is part of the non-citizen U.S. national temporarily until we get our own passports. This is how you would fill out your own passport. This is what we're going to go into. All right. So here, U.S. versus Anthony, the term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. So you can see in the above case citation that there are two national governments and at least two types of citizens. There is actually more than type, more types of recognized citizens, including a 14th Amendment citizen. But this um, treatise only concerns two. So what are the two you have once again? The national or federal um, um, government citizen, which is known as a federal citizen, which is of Washington, D.C. If you was not born in Washington, D.C., then you're not a federal citizen. Case closed. That means that you was um, um, conceived in one of the so-called 50 states. So therefore, that makes you a citizen of one of the several states. So that is the distinction. There's two classes, and you have to make the distinction. So the people that, that were born in, in uh, Washington, they have, to do right. they, they have, have to, to do something. Right. They have to do. What do they have to do? They have to nationalize. Um, they, have, they have to nationalize in Maryland or Virginia. And that's why they won't let you nationalize in Maryland or Virginia because they want to make sure that you stay a citizen. So that means that you have to go outside of Maryland and, and Virginia in order to get your nationalization by going by getting it done and put on the record in one so of the Virginia other states. First Maryland, the Virgin Mary gave birth to the nation. Right. And Washington, D.C also mirrors Kimmy. Right. But the phallus sticking up in the center of it, which symbolizes the DC. Which they call some kind of monument. Right, the Washington Monument. Which, you know, they dealing with Tekkens mm -hmm. and um, the father and the son Tekkens specifically. Right. That miss, what's that lady's name? Did turn that into a gun? You know who I'm talking about, they end up killing her too. She, no, she 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 um she was this great psychologist and she was dealing on racism and the psyche that they were using and why they're trying to kill the black males. Um Jane, um uh, the white lady with no, white hair. No, she's a sister. She's a mother. You know, so she's a uh, Oh, you're my home. Yes, that's the one. Yes. 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 I'm sorry? What about her? Yeah, well, she was, um, oh, she was, I mean, we call it Tekken. Mm -hmm. And she was just, I, I saw some of her stuff, how she was saying that, and then she was just, wow, I guess somebody got tired of her. But she was on point, though. Oh, yeah. And some people, I guess, oh, didn't yeah. like her, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. So, it right here. How they were using psychology again. Right. Exactly, in her ISIS papers. So yeah, you definitely want to read that. So right here, this is birth certificate. Most of the birth certificates in the various states are nothing more than Seti Q Trust 
or CDQ Vi That's Trust. That's real money, right there. And basically, this is the CDQ Vi Trust, which is an account you inherited due to the bankruptcy of the United States in 1933. All right, now who was there? That was Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was the president of the United States during 1933. And that time, he did what is called the House. Resolution or the House Joint Resolution 192. So we're the right. black gold. We're the money. We are the gold. Did they put That's what they did. They collateralized us. Each and every one of us has been collateralized through the birth certificate. And I'll the show white you. people too. Yeah. The all of us. Every, the everybody. Europeans or the Alps. Everybody, everybody here. So the subsequent um, creasing of all the citizens' gold, silver, and all assets as collateral. This account contains millions of dollars in your name. The only problem is that the government and the legal system fails to inform you about it and how to access your money. You know what I'm saying? In the meantime, they are drawing down on it from their own purposes use, personal use, and as payment to the Vatican and the English crown. Have you, have you done this? Have you, have you done this? Yeah, you, I'll, I'll show you how we do I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> you you got to get the basics down first. Right, right. right. Then you got to learn um, the various forms that you can use. So is the funds contained in this seti Q by trust that the judge, clerk, and court um, county prosecutor are really after or interested in? This trust actually pays off all your debts, but... <laughs> But nobody told you that because the elite considers those assets to be their property and the Federal Reserve System is responsible for the management of those investments. So your Social Security. Now, the first, the second person that um, Dorothy met on the Yellow Brick Road was who? The Tin Man. Taxpayer Identification Number. T-I-N. Oh, yeah. Okay. You get it? Taxpayer identification number. The T -I -N. Voluntary. It's voluntary. And what is it? The Social Security card. The Social Security. Tax so the first person that she met was the straw man, which symbolizes the birth certificate. The second person she meet is the tin man, which symbolizes the Social Security card. So here it is. Social Security. Medicaid, Medi um, Medicare, Medicaid is all financed by this trust. The government makes you pay taxes and a portion of the wages supposedly to pay for these services, which they can borrow at any time for any reason since they cannot access um, access the SETI Q Vi Trust to finance their wars or bail out right. Wall Street or their patron corporations. You may receive a monthly statement from a mortgage company, loan company or utility company, which usually have already been paid by the trust. Almost all of these corporate businesses double dip and hope that you have been conditioned well enough by their credit scam to pay them a second time mm -hmm. instead of paying that statement next time. You sign it right, and approve sign, and, and mail it back right. to them. Yep, because everything is paid and by then people way start of your... making those payments then which obligates them to finish. I didn't catch that. I'm sorry, go ahead and finish what you were saying and then afterwards. No, you go ahead. Um, I, it's been said, and then he can tell me if I'm right or not, that, you know, when you go in on your mortgage, right, and you sign all these documents, once you've done all that and they go do what they do, they get the money right then and there. Because right. what? You the money. And they get it from the bond that he said is the money. Yeah. The birth certificate so, is the bond. Right. And so, right. and so, but then, and then they say your payment is not due until two months after that, which really we shouldn't make any more payments after that. That's my understanding. However, when we go to send them a check and we sign it again, right, then that's how they begin we to obligate it. Right. We become obligated when to, send them to continue again. dealing with them. But see, there's three days of lending or 72 hours. So basically, um, you want to um, cancel all the debt within 72 hours, and you do that by way of a 1040, no, excuse me, a 1099 um, C. Form. Nobody's been taught that. Exactly. Right, a 1099 C form, which is called cancellation of debt, is a 1099 C. So you have three days to do that. Three days after you purchase any item, 
that you're in debt with, you can utilize that form along with your birth certificate, which is the bond that is predicated on. And you can utilize the three bonds. After all, everything all right? is in place right. correctly. Right. Okay. The state bonds is 24, SF24, SF25, and SF25A. Those are all the three. That's your pay, That's your bid bond, your performance bond, and your payment bond. You fill those, those. You fill those out along with the 1099C, which is cancellation of all debts, and with a 1040 voucher, which is saying that you're utilizing the money from the birth certificate to pay off the debts, to cancel the debt, and these are the bonds that I'm using to verify the debt has been paid and, off. And they do send us those 1099 forms, but see, we we have been educated as to what else we need to do with it to send it back to it and get it done, like he was saying. You're saying that when you buy a car, they send you a 1099C form? I'm talking about a mortgage. I don't, I don't know right. about, the, about the, right. the car. No, you can you can order the 1099C form from the IRS. Oh. You can call them and say, look, I need 1099A, 1099B, 1099C, 1040, 1040 voucher. I need all of those forms. I need a um, W S um, W eight B E N W eight. I need all these forms. No, they'll send it to you. No, they'll send it to you. you, can and you should them. be able to you print download them. them. You yeah. can actually yeah. pick them up. Yeah. Or them. Nowadays, they even allow for you to print some of these forms off the internet due to the COVID nineteen. Uh -huh. And if I don't, I don't know, you may not want to do this now. I was told about it, and I'm still waiting to do that. Say you buy the car, right? You're supposed to be able to get some form where you uh, redeem that money back when you file through the United States Treasury. Yeah. Now, that's only once you open your United States Treasury, which is your UCC tr um, trust. Okay. Well, so after once all you your documents are set activate, up properly, right, so, once so you, if you went and you paid ten grand for a car or whatever, you're supposed to be able to get that back. It's right. supposed to be some law that enforces let's do a, that. Let's do a 1099 OID. Oh, damn, we don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's 1099 OID. We need to you do have, that. You have, you have, it's only during the time of October through March. So oh, this so, time coming up. So I need to finish so my processes Today is what? Tomorrow? Well, okay. what? October the 1st, right, October the 1st through March 21st, if I'm not mistaken, March 31st, Well, whatever 21st. those windows are, but you have to stick with those calendar That's the window. Okay. That you have to do the 1099 OID, and you, but you have to keep all your receipts from the, of all the credit that you have done over the year. And you can take that credit of everything that you've done over the year, and the IRS will pay you back from everything that you spent out over that year. And then that's okay. what we do. But but that's but that's how you do it. So I got I've helped several processes. I've helped several people to do um a, um ten ninety nine OID. One lady, how, how much did she get, baby? Sixty thousand? Fifty three thousand? One year did she got fifty five thousand the next year? So it's not it's saying you took up all your credit for that year. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, whatever I thought you, you said, yeah. You wake up when you, you wake you, up. You, Credit means that you just take any credit, anything that you've done on your credit card, anything that you've done with credit. You know, like if you go to the um, gas pump and they ask you, is this a debit card or a credit card? You hit credit. And then you take the receipt, put that in your box. So everything that you keep of credit over the year, you can send to the IRS and tell them this is approximately how much it is on the based on the OID, um, on the 1099 OID, and they'll send you back. So I need to get that machine that can scan that because you know those papers dissipate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the information. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they got a machine that just does that. that scans it. Yeah. Well, you can scan. Mm -hmm. Take a picture or scan either way, as long as you still get That's it. That's just separate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. It does, especially on those receipts. Yeah. You be looking all day long. Be like, hold on, well, how much is this? You put it all in the light everywhere. You still can't get it. But then that's when you keep your bank statement. Right. If you can go there and then they'll say how you did it, debit or credit or whatever. Right. You know, the so the Social Security office is set up now where you can't even I guess I have to write because they You, you got the right on there. You can't even come they're not even accepting calls. They probably can't handle the volume. Right. And that's why they're not accepting them. Mm. Okay. Oh my God. So 
um, the claim of the um, safety Q by trust, which is your birth certificate trust account. All right. Title 31, U.S. Code 1, um, 1321, 1322, Nationality Act, 1940. And watch the judge seem freaked out when you bring this sensitive information to the table. Inform the judge that you are the executor of the trial and that the judge is the administrator of the trial and publicly define the roles of the CQV trust. The judge is unlawfully attempting to access your trust and can do so only through your consent. This is why he asked you, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? If you say yes, then that means they can go and dip in your joint. That's why it's good to have your indigenous name. See, when I went to court, right, because I was in my indigenous name, which was not tied to the bond. Right. So they didn't try to railroad me because right. they didn't have access to that. Right. Is that right? Right. That's the point. They're not supposed to railroad you because you, you is in a whole separate jurisdiction. They have to pump the brakes. Right. So right here, deceiving you into agreeing to let them assume improper roles when grant them authority. This is unfortunately corrupt reality that our peaceful law abiding communities are dealing with in the court system today. So you have to tell them that you are the executor or executor, as we would say, and they are the administrator. The judge is the administrator. He's not a judge, technically. We haven't had any judges since um, actually 1871. Yeah, I have a question. Some say even before that. Go ahead. If I go in with my freedom papers, right, mm -hmm. and I say, hey, I am the executor, and this is what needs to happen, and then I can prove that. Right, that's what your nationality is for. Oh, so I don't have to show them my freedom papers, just my nationality uh, document. Yeah, what freedom papers are you talking about? What are the freedom papers? The bond. The bond itself, where I had the it. The birth certificate? Yeah, we remember yeah. how I had it when I went and I said, right. Remember, I used it when we traveled. Yeah. And the lady got pissed off because, you know, when you go to the state and you kill that birth certificate. Right. So my woman we, uh, went to um, the trip last right. year. Right. The lady was like, You're not supposed to have this on there. I said, Look, but you ain't supposed to take it off because then you ruin the document. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. she was pissed off about it. She was some old lady, but she was, she was mad. Right. But it's still legitimate, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The rule 220, because I speak to that. This mm -hmm. is, I own this. I'm the majority. I am not a minority. I'm not a minor here. Right. You know, you know they love this putting you in that role. Yeah. They love putting you in that minor role. So right well, here. I don't even know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not trying to act superior or anything like that. I'm, I'm saying I used to be them. I used to do that. I didn't know either. Right. Yeah. Can you pass my phone? Oh, I'm sorry. The key, the pe the, the core too. The key word there was is was past tense. <laughs> right. So right here, you, the living man, woman, equals beneficiary of the CQV trust. Judge equals trustee of the CQV trust, and clerk is the administrator of the QC um Q um CQV trust. Both clerk and judge must follow your instruction for discharge and dismissal as you are the executor of the trial and beneficiary of the CQV trust. When they fail to do so, they just own their role and breach the trust, the highest crime in trust law. This is grounds for immediate termination of responsibilities, but in many cases, the judge will still retain possession via use of violence, the police, the bailiff, sheriff, etc. So here, the safety Q trust, the pseudo judge or um, of the pseudo courts have no power within the consent of both the plaintiff and the defendant. And in every case, the judge must determine that he has consent, personum, and subject matter, jurisdiction before he can act and access the safety Q trust. So when you say, based on the Dred Scott case decision, I'm not a citizen, nor will I ever be, that stops their jurisdiction right there. That stops them from being able to dibble dabble in your city Q trust. But if I go in my indigenous name, they don't have it anyway. Well, I, well, that's what your paperwork is for, is to prove that based on the Dress Guy case decision, you have the right in order to declare your own nationality because you're not a citizen of their fictitious corporation. What the Dress Guy case or the, the Dress Guy case say states specifically that we are not citizens of the fictitious of the fictitious that's what yellow we're brick road. Right. So, 
your birth certificate and your executive's estate. How valuable is your birth certificate? Well, your birth certificate is worth hundreds of millions of dollars right now. I got a question for you, Dr. Mm -hmm. So, like, we have stuff in the name of the temple. Uh -huh. However, can't we do stuff in the name of the trust? Or you don't recommend that? Because the trust has the corporate name. Which is on paper, I guess it doesn't matter, but my name is tied to a German, right? And that's who have your birth certificate. I don't know. I just know that when people go to you, the you history, can find out. If you go to if you go to the um um the place where you need to go to is fidelity.org. Um fidelity.org, you can put in your information. Um, well, and find out who 